Hey, it's Bridget from Math Giraffe. This is about making uh, stations from three clear plastic plates stacked together. Each layer can spin until the student lines it all up correctly, depending on whatever skill they're practicing. In this one, the challenge is to get each set of three numbers to represent side lengths for a possible triangle using triangle inequality theorem. There's only one correct answer and one way to line it up so they all work out. You can do this with a lot of different topics and subjects. You just have to make sure there are multiple possible connections between the items that you write, not just one matching question and answer, or else they'll have to just get one and everything else will line up easily. So each item has to have more than one possible partner or set. They have to test one row and see if everything else fits right, and if not, make adjustments to keep solving the puzzle. Try to keep it broad or have multiple links between each item of information. These are a few examples you could try experimenting with, but there just has to be some overlap between the categories. If you do written categories like this, they can be repeated. So for example, in this one, any pair of two angle measures can go together in a triangle, but the third that's missing will determine the type of triangle. So the classifications written on the outermost layer are repeated in different spots so that only one arrangement works to make all the sets correct. As the students test different combinations, they make their own shortcuts and narrow down the possibilities. It's really great for making critical thinking connections. So to get started with these, you're going to want a circle template just to get the spacing of your numbers or words right. I just kind of smashed a paper between two plates to get the right size circle and then cut it out. It really doesn't have to be perfect. Then I folded it to make eight sectors and I traced a circle in the middle. Then I marked off halfway between the edge and that circle all the way around just by eyeballing it. So this way I have the three layers. The first set of whatever information will go inside the innermost circle, and then the next will go outside the innermost circle, and then the third goes all the way on the very outside. Once you've chosen the information you want to use, you're going to fill it in on your template all the way around, and it's fine if on that template everything's lined up with the correct answer. And then you set the first plate on top, use a permanent marker to transfer only the outermost circle of info onto that plate. Then place another plate on top and repeat it with the middle layer of numbers or letters or words. And then put the third plate down and write the innermost circle of information onto that plate. And then make sure you're spinning them as you go so that you don't give away the answer by the direction of the writing. All the numbers or wording should be facing the outside of the plate. Just a couple little tricks. I like to add an arrow at one place on only one plate to mark a little check row for the kids to record their answer. That way, just by that one set of three numbers, they can write that down. I can tell if they've solved the puzzle and they got it all right. I also learned it helps to mark a colored dot in the middle of the bottom of each set so that once you have multiple sets of these, you can tell which three layers go together. Otherwise, they get all mixed up. I really hope you can find some great ways to use these if you play around with some ideas of your own subject area. There's more math specific examples on my blog if you want that, but um, otherwise move on, check out some more videos from this Tools from Teaching Teens team. There's tons of great ideas here.